Hello and welcome to Author Hour with Richard Linton. I'm your host, Richard Linton, author of North Career Deception. Today, my guest is Jennifer Berman. Jennifer is the author of A Widow's Walk, a memoir about love, marriage, and betrayal. She started writing the book while sitting in a courtroom during her husband's six-week trial where he was eventually convicted to 13 years in federal prison for real estate fraud. Her next memoir, The Madonna and the Whore, is a powerful deep dive into the challenges of relationship, sex, dating, and addiction. And if you're thinking of turning over after that introduction, then go and have a drink and come back when you're ready for some serious action. Jennifer, <laughs> great to, to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm great, Richard. Thank you so, for having me. I am not a big on memoir, I have to, I have to confess. I, I've read a lot of biographies, but yours is pretty much one of the first memoirs I've read. Um, Take me back, like you, you are, if I, if I, if I, to, to sum up, um, you know, you've got the perfect life, your husband's a su successful businessman, uh, children at private school, you've got two houses, one in Nantucket, like you're doing pretty well. Then this indictment comes down, I don't want to go too much into the book because I want people to read the book, but take me back to that moment where you got the, the call about the indictment and how, and, and you thought, my husband might go to prison and then how much worse did it get after that like like you know how did you envisage it playing out and how did it play out in reality Ooh, several questions there um so wow i remember exactly when i got um a phone call is actually from a friend at school right. who called me there's a chapter in the book or a few pages in the book that that described this very moment um, it was April I'm sitting in my house my kids are playing outside and my friend called me and said are you okay I, I saw the news and I said what are you talking about and she said Matt has been indicted wow. Richard I barely knew what the word meant I, I mean I kid you not. You had to look it up in the dictionary. I kind of. <laughs> I mean, I love that. There's a what, line that you see, you literally had to look it up. And what, what do you mean right. he's been indicted? Right. What is, you know? So there was, um, you know, a, 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 a disbelief. Um, so, and then, but, but it spiraled very, very quickly, snowballed very quickly um, as soon as that moment came in. Um, you know, the repercussions with the girls at school and a lot of articles in the how, paper. How was, how was the school? Because I want to talk a little bit about various reactions oh. from various people in your life. <clears throat> Again, not too much detail, but mm -hmm. how, was it, how was it when the school? I mean, that must have been really tough. Yeah, well, my one daughter was in third grade and the other one was in fifth grade. And um, so they were in the, the lower school of Germantown Academy. Um, and they were great actually um, they were they were really they were very supportive uh, my younger daughter experienced some difficult peer um, I guess both of Kids them can some, be mean, especially girls I would say no Aren't girls well, worse than well boys I, in that I sense? don't have boys but <laughs> I also remember uh, a few weeks after the indictment and like I said things just snowballed and the school was very supportive to me uh, but I do remember Ava coming home in tears one day saying uh, that her and her friend were Googling in the classroom wow. Wow. You know, and you know, sitting in the classroom at, at Germantown Academy sure. looking up what, what was going on. So yeah. it was very difficult on so many levels. So I can't I, imagine. I mean, I, I was going to ask you a question and I thought maybe it sounds a bit sort of flip, but I feel like almost a death in the family is worse mm. than what you've gone through. Do you know what I mean? I do like, know what you it? mean. I feel, I've, I'm sorry, I've, let me just, just, just to, for, for viewers. Mm -hmm. So, so, so um, Jennifer's husband was actually convicted and, and, and put into federal prison for 13 years. That, that was the, you know, and you find that out at the beginning of the memoir. So that's the background here. Mm -hmm. You know, we go from this perfect life to that. But, but yeah, so just, just follow up on that idea of, you know, death or husband sent away for 20 years or 13 years. So it did feel, uh, it, it, it did feel like a death and it felt maybe worse because there was no finality. It was, and so 
and, and maybe like death, which I really have not experienced on obviously on this close, level from a spouse or a parent yeah. even, mm -hmm. right. um, the mourning process is non-ending, which mm -hmm. I don't think most people understand. Mm -hmm. I write in my new book, The Madonna and the Horror, about mm -hmm. Uh, the first year after he left for prison, I felt very supported by friends and family, mm -hmm. the, the community, the community at school. About after a year, kind of stopped. Oh, and wow. I, I, I write about how, you know, sort of grief has no ending. And so, it, yes, it's... Um, well, what did yeah. you do about, like, the relationship? Like, was there a point um, when you discussed with Matt, this is over? I mean, is it? Is it? I'm presuming mm -hmm. it yes, is. Yes, we're divorced. Well, it, every so many layers, Richard. Um, so, so interestingly enough, um, right, but right before he left, we were sitting in bed talking, and he said, "What are you going to do for companionship?" And I, I said, "Are you kidding? Like nothing. I'm sure. not. I'm." So at that I'm point, done. you were literally going to wait. Like, so wait for him? maybe. maybe. I, you I, sure. I, I had no idea. I was right. taking it one day at a time, but for about a year, I was a prison wife. I called right. myself a prison wife, and I visited him with the girls and. Um, in the new book, I describe. By the way, I love. I love. There's one snippet in the book where where Ava's daughter calls it. She doesn't want to call it prison. She calls it punishment camp. That's punishment right. camp. By, and by the way, I was I was tearing up page nine and page eighteen already. You know when I read the book. So it's. I really highly recommend it. It's just such a great story. But sorry to it's, get back to that well, moment where you were right. deciding what to do with your relationship. So it was a gradual uh, decision making process for me. I was looking, and again, I go much deeper into it in my next book. But mm -hmm. I was. Uh, uh, looking for, I was looking for something from him that sure. he was unable to give me. I was looking for, um, I was looking for him to admission, admission of fault. Um, he, I was looking for, I wanted to be able to. In that first year, you mean? Yes. Right. In that, and that, did I, that ever come? Not, the, the sort of not really. Not really. So to this day, do you, are you uh, do you have a firm idea of whether he was guilty or not? So I supported him. I mean, I basically handed the government my Nantucket house, thinking they would be easy on him. I believed in him, uh, f completely believed that he was innocent, and n now I don't. Now I really? now I don't, I don't want to get into the book. I don't want right. to spoil it for the book. So yeah, go I'm going to redirect. Uh, yeah. So you, I want to just really quickly answer your question about um, the first question. So we we are divorced, and and it was a gradual. Um, process that I, I came to that. I supported him in the beginning and then eventually I realized that I just couldn't do it anymore. Wow. I couldn't I couldn't stay married to him because I, I for so, on so many levels. I had actually started dating after a year. Mm -hmm. I was on, he wanted me to. I, I, I you told him that you were. told him I was. Mm -hmm. He was happy for me um, and my older daughter who was maybe 12 or 13 at the time said how can you be dating another man and be married I said you're right how can that's not that's not okay um, and I, I I thought it was the right thing to do I was afraid that there would be some legal you know being tied to him right. um, and I was ex extremely angry and hurt and I was not going to continue to support him and be a prison wife any longer so I divorced him I would not use lawyers I many years off? How many years uh, into the so uh, two oh gosh about maybe three two two and a half years later um, I walked myself to the Montgomery County courthouse by myself and um, without a lawyer got, you know got myself a divorce yeah. and he signed off on it and it was yeah I, I do want to move on to the writing process because okay. that yes. shows up but I do yes. want to also ask the two yes. quick things, because okay. I, I, they just it's all so fascinating when we can talk for hours. Okay. But um, one question I had was about the people who did not support you, because um, yeah. there were there were some of those people, and and people some for, for whatever reason some mm. people decided to basically disown you. Am I, am I yes. right in saying that? Yes. Yes. Why do you think? Yes. G given that, well, a I wonder if they even read your book, <laughs> first mm. thing. But maybe so. Mm. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But. Why do you think they they like people mm -hmm. could not support mm -hmm. you? Why, mm -hmm. why do you? Why do you have an idea? It, yes, and it's so again, it's so layered. I think there were many uh, reasons. I think, um, you know, I I, I um, 
lived in Chestnut Hill, very, you know, small um, community. Small and posh, let's be honest. Um, let's small be honest. and posh community. Yeah. And I, f well I think f people thought I was contagious. I mean, I know that sounds sort of, wow. I, I, I don't think that people um, were comfortable dealing with or um, my, my pain. I think that was part of it. Right. I think, um, I don't think people knew what what, what to, to do, do. I think so, and yeah. and I also think I was very we were very couple coupled centric so I had no single friends and much of what we did socially was with couples. I was really super surprised that and I hear this from from widows and mm -hmm. my widows walk it's a metaphor but mm -hmm. I hear this from people whose husbands have died or spouses have died that oh well they just stopped inviting me really? to dinner wow. and I think there's a discomfort. Yeah. With the, you know, for you know, fifth wheel, or um, you know, there's also so that so whole difficult. sex thing right. that I feel like as then I was this single woman that maybe I don't, no, I can't speak for anybody, but I s had the vibe that maybe that wasn't. You were kind a, of a threat. Maybe I, I maybe. I know. I see what you say. I can see that. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I, it was real. It was it was very painful to be sort of. Um, so what did you, so out. does that, that um, kind of brings us nicely into the mm -hmm. writing because you, um, and again, I love, I love your writing, I love the details, like I, I remember your dad, you, you talked about your dad sitting on the bench, the hard wooden bench, mm -hmm. all, you know, every day with you and that's like, oh my God, just some of these little details that you put in really, uh, uh, you know, incredibly um, heartfelt and warming and, and, and really just, just bring out, you know, what a great story you wrote and it's a true story, it's a memoir. Um, so, so going going back to the writing, you said you started writing. Now, did you always write? Did no. you just thought? Oh, you didn't always no, write. No, I wasn't a writer, Richard. But you did want to write a book. Right? I will, so I was sort of a dream. I wanted to be a writer. Right. I became a therapist instead. Right. I l loved writing, but I was I was not a trained writer. I um, anyway. So yes, but I started to for, to deal with this very painful and uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable. Sitting in the courtroom. Oh my gosh, yes. Right. And um, on a wooden bench. For six weeks in a row. The, the, um, yeah, so I started writing, I think just in my journal, maybe we were allowed to have our phone in the courtroom as well. I, I, I sort of, I don't remember. So, so wait, so, so one day you just said, I must take a notebook with me, just and then to write yes, down Yes, I need to. Because I need to do something. I need to do something. There wow. was so much um, discomfort and anxiety watching my husband Matt go, um, be on trial, and I started for a, a catharsis, just writing right. in my journal and on on my phone in the notes oh, really? section right. of yeah, my phone. Yeah. Crazy. So, so how many in, how many um, the, the six week period? When did you start that process? In the, in the very beginning, it very started by scribbling mm -hmm. notes and feelings, and and then I started. Um, then I would go home yeah. and need to process right. more. Um, did you I, then type I, it up? So Richard, I didn't even have a computer. Right. I, d I had a. I didn't have. I didn't. I had a computer. I didn't have a laptop, and I spent a lot of time in my bed during that um, trial, just feeling very depressed. And so I would sit in my bed on my phone, on my iPhone, because I didn't have a laptop yet. I soon got one, um, but and wrote. I think. I would say a quarter of the book on my phone, really? Um, really? processing and and a lot of the a lot but you of you didn't know you were necessarily no write a book I didn't know it was going to be a book it was um, just getting out was my it like a diary it was a diary Wednesday correct 12th. that's right. right it was in diary form and when I ended up um, deciding I, I sent a friend of mine out in Los Angeles all of my uh, the the, di the the journal and she said this is good uh -huh. you you need to do something yeah. with this and that gave me a focus and a purpose um, during, you know, the, sure. the continuing, you know, uh, he, he didn't end up going to prison until about a year after the trial ended. Uh, so... I wanted to ask you about that as well, because yeah, I think people I find that interesting. That so, interesting. So you might think, you might think that once, you know, your spouse has been sort of sentenced, as it mm -hmm. were, you might think that it's over. But that actually wasn't the case for you, correct? You, you, you went through this sort of Almost not a honeymoon period, but, but waiting I, period. It was right. excruciating. It right. was sort of. I mean, it. it but part did you of, also become closer as well at that part, point? Well, I mean, 
Did, did I say that to Supported. you? Or didn't I read that? It became more. Yeah, severe. you know what? You're right. There was a. Um, I believe that maybe not during that time. Um, yeah, there was. Matt was a workaholic, mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of um, time that he spent away from from the home and when he couldn't work anymore and when we yeah he, he I, I wrote that he came he came back to us so mm. there was a sweetness mm. and a closeness that developed with that said I, I was I had I withheld I Were was you writing then I was point yeah well? I was writing right. Um, right. but I um, in some ways we became closer in other ways I pulled back sure. immensely because I was very so angry and could not express that to him. One, I mean, if I was watching this show right now, I think I, I and, and, and in fact, I guess it's a question I've always, and you do cover it at, towards the beginning of the book, so I don't mind asking you now, but you know, I think I think a question that people want to know, just part of the story, mm -hmm. is like, you know, how did you not know, like that, that your husband was committing these things and, 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 or did you have a sense of the business? Was it a shady business? So Talk it's a, again, it's really com very complicated, and that question often, you know, puts me off. Right. Um, it's not today, six years later. Okay. But um, is it okay to ask that? I mean, yes, we can move yes, on. Yes, of course. Okay. So, how did I not know? Your questions are so big, Richard. I. I think there's something called the art of denial, sure. self-preservation. And you talk about that, and I mm -hmm. totally, yeah. Yes, and I think um, I know in the big. I know that um, in the beginning. I mean, Matt's uh, business has had morphed immensely throughout our 25-year-long relationship, and um, in in the beginning of his real estate uh, career. Right. I, I remember no kids. I remember being very involved with helping him look at deals and to try to tell him what I thought was a good deal and not a good deal. And there are a lot of not good deals out there. Mm -hmm. And um, Matt's relationship with money, as a lot of ours can be, is, was very, very dysfunctional. And how did I not know? I, I believed really everything he told me and I trust really person and soul I, that I know I mean we don't know each other that well trust friends, is another oh me I'm a trusting person well, no I feel like you're a genuine soul right. so so it stands the reason that you would believe what your husband has been telling you all these years and I wanted to and he I don't did you ever meet Matt? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah, right yeah. I mean so charming and yeah. he could Nothing tell out of you, the ordinary, like just a, a regular guy. And he could tell you anything, and you would believe it too. Right, so that's the kind of person right, he right, was, Richard. Right. And I, I mean, everyone adored him. Yeah. Um, I was always sort of the, you know, the one that wasn't. But um, so I did not know that he was doing anything illegal. There was a several years where he, his partner, Andy Bogdanoff, um, we knew he was he was doing things that were illegal right. and so he moved to um, Arizona and Matt I asked him to ex you know separate himself from him him the right. partner right. and Matt had said he did um, and again I believed him so that's it you know and I believed it was everything was going to be okay right that was right. sort of I just really believed everything was going to be okay it's just a minute and so going back to the writing of it then mm -hmm. so you what you sent you sent your some of your work out to your friend mm -hmm. um, she said so, this is good yes so then so just just remind mm -hmm. us how long so when was the moment you decided I'm gonna write I'm gonna turn this into a book I'm gonna do it so I think uh, about pr probably Three months after that, I said, you know, I, I really, what? well, I sent it to my friend and she oh. said, And when you, was that in? Sorry, after the, so, after the sentencing. Oh so gosh, your husband Richard, went to prison, oh boy. Um, roughly, just to get So he went to, it was before he went to prison that okay. I decided I was writing, I was writing Did my you story. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember if I told him. I don't think it would have. No, I don't think I did okay. right away. It was okay. it was not something I was willing to share with him. This <laughs> right. was mine, right. and yeah. I wasn't willing to share it. And so uh, he went, and I decided to hire uh, an editor. I needed a lot of help. You I mean, this was you way, have to hire an editor. If you are writing, <laughs> one thing that you spend your money on folks if a lot you, of money you yeah you, you <laughs> must hire a professional editor yeah, and, and even i actually hire a 
proofreader on top of that. Yes. But just just so that if anyone's in any doubt, yes, you can read your manuscript ten times, but you mm. do. So so I'm glad you did yes. that. So so now the ed, did the what did the editor say? Yeah, well, this is going to be good. We can publish this. This yes. is good enough to publish. So no, my editor was more than an editor. She actually it was the way this all came together is a whole other story, but she was actually a childhood friend. She lived oh, out, okay. nice. uh, there's a whole chapter in my book, uh, my mo when I went out to Boulder, she lived out there. I had not seen her for 20 years, and wow. I was ta telling her I'm, I'm writing a book, and she said, and I'm looking for an editor, and she said, you know that's what I do. I said, no, oh, Stacy, I, kind of I did not I did not know what, what that, she? Um, she, yeah, she she's a book editor. Uh, she, she's, it does all, she's oh, done yeah, many, right. many projects, Stacy Stern out in Boulder, and she, so she was more perfect, than perfect. an editor. She yeah. was a mentor. She okay. was, she held my hand. I, like I said, I was not a writer. And, and you have to remember my book, what, there were so many journal, there was, it was so, mine was so very unorganized. Right. Right. So she really helped me um, take the steps. Uh, so I so I hired her, and I had to. For me, Richard, it was a slower process than maybe some. So, wait, I, so how many? So you had? A, did you have a finished thing at that point? No, I writing? didn't. I was still writing. Okay. So how much of the the finished book at that point when you hired the professional editor? Uh, how much had you done? Half of it? Three maybe quarters? Like two thirds, maybe okay, so two, two thirds. thirds. So then she's helping you get it all together. Correct. You're still writing to the end. Correct. Deciding. Okay. And I had to put it down several times. So for me, you had to put it down because because you, it, was it was so was painful. painful. Mm -hmm. wow. So I had to, as a memoirist, one of, the, and I'm struggling a little bit with that today as well. Um, my life, you know, is going pretty well right now. Right. But what, as a memoirist, you have to go back into the muck. Okay. You have to. I mean, I was, I could not go back into that courtroom one more time. So I said, Stacy, I'm putting this down. And uh, I, and I can't. For, How long did you put it down for? Did I would put it down for a, a few week weeks, and then okay. I would pick it back she, up. Was she calling you saying, she "Come would, on, you No, she was not. Okay. It was the ball was in my court, but she, yeah, she was super supportive. I didn't have a contract, contract, uh, a formal contract with her with a time yeah. limit. Now on my book that I'm writing now, the Madonna and the Whore, I also have a literary company out in Boulder just random and they I had a contract so, so you I got an agent now for the second book so I don't have an agent now that's a whole nother story okay. I do not um, feel comfortable with all with most agents yeah. that I have met I was thinking I was going to hire an agent for a widow's walk and I've just had some uncomfortable experiences and that's my own personal and I, and I have to say mm -hmm. again just talking as, a, as, a, as an indie publisher an indie mm -hmm. author right that is a huge for people thinking about which way to go right it's a huge i feel like it, it really does take away all the pleasure once you get your agent i've heard other writers say right. once they get their second book and they've got a contract and then they've Oof. got the deadlines you know the pleasure goes away so i think what you did and what i've done i think there's a lot to it i think there's a lot to be said for it and because you could keep going but there's not this kind of hammer over your head right. um right. So, so, and what on. we've done, what you're speaking to, Richard, is self-publishing, yeah, and exactly. so uh, through Amazon, yeah. and, um, and which, sorry, which, let me just, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, at the top, I wanted to show you this. So here is the cover: A Widow's Walk, Life Before and After My Husband Went to Prison. And what I love about this cover, folks, is that this is actually Nantucket, and there's literally the widow's walk on top of the house, which is Jennifer's house, which is super cool cover and it, uh, you know and again if you're thinking about self-publishing the cover is crucial I think it's actually perfect for, for you did you did you come up with this idea so I did and I um, I, I was I was I was gifted so many things Richard I have to say people really um, helped me immensely my friend in Nantucket who flies um, didn't ask for any kind of payment he said I'll fly over your house okay. and take a picture and I don't want anything just send me a book Aww. and um, so yes that that I did come up with that and that is important I um, the the details and the artistry and the layout all of those things I had no idea right. what what to do or how to do it and my, my there's a thing called an interior book designer right, right? and I, I you know that's another thing right. like there's your book cover designer right. and then there's an the interior book designer right. I had no idea either there was right. two different things I, I, sorry to cut you off, I'm cutting okay. off, I want to get back to the writing process because yes. we've got a few minutes left. Yes. So um, when when did you write 
And where did you write? Give us a few details. Did you write for one hour a day, three hours a day? Just okay. give us a little bit of detail there. So mostly it was it was my uh, it was my emotional release and my it was cathartic for me to write to get out all of my feelings. And I would write uh, late at night. Late at night. Uh, really? Not, not like that late. Not that late because I'm not. Nine o'clock. Yes, when the girls when were I'm asleep right. at night, when I was alone, you know, in bed on my laptop that T I purchased. TV on? I don't own a TV, Richard. Music, music. No. So just silence. Silence. Silent um, and did you say on your laptop? Correct. A glass of wine. I uh, nope. I don't no? drink. Just, okay. Don't drink at all. <laughs> Not really. really. No. Wow. <laughs> no. Yeah. So no wine, and maybe an hour and a half. I my this my stamina. I call it stamina with writing. Is is not uh, is about an hour and a half, and then I need to take a break. I think that right. was the I way hear, I was I with schoolwork, but with the writing, especially this kind of writing for me, it's mm -hmm. super deep yeah. and emotional and personal. Yeah, sure. So much harder because it's a memoir. I, yes. I wanted to ask you the difference between memoir and biography, but we just don't have time it's for okay. that. Um, tell me a little bit about switching to the present tense. Around page eighty, you switch to the present tense. Oh. Does that go? Like, I don't know that if that was, about? was that intentional? Uh, yeah, no, no, you, 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 you talk about it. I just wonder whether that was like a, an interesting... What did, what did I say, Richard? So you, Can you, you remind you me? Wrote, you wrote in the past tense, and then you suddenly sort of switched to the present tense as if you were writing a right. diary here and now today. Right. Today we did so and so, da, 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 da. I just wondered if that I, was a, a strategy or I, I don't remember that being a with. strategy. It may have been okay. something my editor said, right. let's do it like this, yeah, and here's why. And I can't even remember why, but I do remember the fact that most of what I was writing was in the past. Yeah. And then, um, you know, all of a sudden, I, um, the shift was to today. Uh, something very interesting that she encouraged me to do that was a real struggle for me was she wanted to help. She wanted the book to end on a positive note. Right. Um, you know, there's all kinds of to help. I don't know if it was to help sell it yeah, or to, yeah. um, for whatever reason. And that was a challenge for me because it 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 did end with some hope, uh, but but it, it was a hard choice for me to 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 make, um, which was one of the reasons why I didn't want to go with an agent was because I needed to make all, all my choices so, myself. Tell me the name of the second book. The second book is called The Madonna and the Whore. The Madonna and the Whore, and that again is a memoir. It's a memoir. It's about life struggles, relationships. Correct. Here is the first book, A, a Widow's Walk. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, you can also find my book on Amazon, North Korea Deception. It's uh, an international uh, spy thriller set in London, Moscow, Vladivostok, and Pyongyang. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Richard. And we will see you again soon. Sorry we had to cut it off so much. I wanted to ask Jennifer. Maybe we'll have her back. But thanks for being with us today.